Webb here, and welcome again to my workshop. Today, I have another piece of spalted Tasmanian wattle. And as you can see, it's um, full of grub holes and um, it's split all over the place. Now, what I intend to do with this piece is to uh, shorten it up a little bit take the worst split out of it and um, I'm going to make a spalted bowl well I'm going to attempt to cut it off to length and I've just put it between my centers okay so I'm going to start machining this around now and I'll machine a tenon on here uh, then we'll turn it around put it in a chuck and um, mark where my tenon, the boundary for my tenon is. I'll just um, do that with my skew. machine of tenon to fit my truck anyway so now we shall continue taking a little bit more off this now and um, I think this is going to turn into something quite nice using my red nose uh, scraper now to um, clean as much of the uh, mach um, machining max out of it as I can um, before I start sanding it. Actually I'll turn it around and sculpt the inside out. But um, it is beginning to look rather interesting. A few more marks there I've got to get out here.
have a lot of success with my skew actually using it as a as a, a scraper. Look at that. That looks really nice. I think this is going to turn out to be something quite special. Hmm. I like to play it safe with uh, cutting off these little stubs. I know the uh, more experienced uh, wood turners would um, get their pattern off tool and take this down to a very very small uh, stub and snap it off. Um, so, but I much prefer to take it down to about this big and then cut it with a hacksaw. Safer for me that way. Okay this is turning out to be quite an interesting project actually. So what I'll do now is I'll machine the inside out and I'll leave a, a stem there for this to uh, hang on to as long as I can and then uh, we'll machine it off and hope it all holds together even with all these cracks in it. So here we go. You'll notice that I'm using my padding off tool to get at the material here on the outside and some of the material in here. Uh, the reason being is because my, my skew is, is actually fouling with the, um, the, the, the wheel at the back here that adjusts the quilling and I can't actually get in there with it so this does so um, now I've heard it said by some of the very experienced uh, turners on the, on the internet, uh, on YouTube, that um, you use any tool in your arsenal to, um, to get the job done. And so, really, you can use anything in your arsenal. <laughs> got rid of me stub there we can now uh, continue uh, more easily machining the uh, the inside out here uh, one thing I have noticed is just here there's a, a well piece that might break out I don't think I'm going to be able to go too thin on here because there's that many cracks through it I don't want to lose these these wings so um, I'm not going to go too much thinner than that, I don't think, but uh, I'll just now start to clean this up. I have this um, habit of holding my tool uh, in a clenched fist like this, and um, I, I re probably shouldn't. Uh, I, I should hold the tool like this because one day 
I'm going to get caught with a, a piece of material cover out, catching me in the uh, back of the hand there. So uh, I'm going to have to try and revert from doing that. Round, round no scraper time but uh, we'll we'll find out there's a lot of cracks in this um, I'm just gonna have to be very very carefully do it rather very very carefully I'd hate to lose it now but uh, here we go I know some of you wood turners out there are probably saying, oh, he's using the wrong tool. But, um, and I probably am. But uh, this tool works for me, I think. So, well, we will continue a little bit. Let's see if I can move this tool rest a little closer. I should probably move it a lot closer. last uh, video I made a long stemmed goblet well this is uh, what was left of that uh, material and now it's um, becomes a tool which uh, it extends the uh, shall we say the clamping um, effectiveness then of the chuck Ext extends it outwards and I've actually got a piece of rag there just to protect it um, and um, I've squeezed the quill up against it and now I can machine off this um, tenon at the back so let's have a go at that this I definitely think I need to sharpen this it's not working very well I've come too far now for this all to end in tears so better to be safe than sorry any more chances with that I'm just going to now just clean this face up here a little bit more and um, we're gonna say we're, I'll take this off with a little grinder or something I think that's another tool we could do with a sharpen yeah, as with um, cutting uh, metal on a metal lathe, um, the same sort of principles really apply to a wood lathe. Um, you really need to keep your tools really, really sharp. And um, 
yeah, things go an awful lot better. Relieving the center here a little bit. Yeah, just relieving the center here slightly so I've got a foot here for it to sit on nice and squarely. Do you know, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I might just do a little bit more sanding now. Um, but I really don't think I ought to go any further because some of these areas are looking, you know, that's that segment there is really just hanging on by this piece here. There's not much else holding that in there. So um, I'm going to call that machined. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll just do some finishing now. We'll do some sanding on it and um, then we will put some sealer on it. And uh, I think we'll call it a day.